This week at Interior. This country's public lands, national parks, forests, wildlife refuge, and federal waters are some of those valuable assets that we collectively own. At a time when they face threats from land grabs to climate change, we can't afford to turn our backs on them. A major address this week from Secretary Jewell on the next 100 years of conservation in America. Speaking at the National Geographic Society, the Secretary laid out a vision for actions to build on America's conservation legacy and pass that legacy to a new generation. Teddy Roosevelt, John Muir, Rachel Carson, the conservation movements they ignited fit their particular historical moment. And likewise, the groundswell for conservation that's building today is different from any other we have seen. It's digital, it's diverse, and more than ever, it's motivated by values that are widely shared among Americans of all political beliefs. The Secretary called for a course correction to make America's public lands more relevant to all Americans from all backgrounds, to use landscape level planning to achieve conservation and sustainable development, and to strengthen investments in our public lands. Secretary Jewell also announced a first-of-its-kind study to analyze the impact that outdoor recreation has on the nation's economy. You can watch the entire speech at DOI.gov. A new report this week demonstrating the impact the nation's parks have on the national economy. A record number of park visitors last year provided some $32 billion in economic output while supporting 295,000 jobs. The report shows that every tax dollar invested in the National Park Service returns $10 to the U.S. economy because of visitor spending in surrounding communities. Secretary Jewell this week announced nearly $95 million in grants for all 50 states, those grants being made through the Land and Water Conservation Fund to support conservation and recreation projects coast to coast. The Secretary has called for full and permanent funding for the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which is paid for by lease revenue from offshore oil and gas development. More than $48 million in grants and some $86 million matching funds announced this week to protect waterfowl and other bird species across 18 states, Canada, and Mexico. The money will allow the Fish and Wildlife Service and its partners to conserve or restore 275,000 acres of wetlands and associated habitats. Check out the projects at fws.gov. Two major businesses stepped up this week to inspire the next generation of outdoor stewards. The REI Foundation announced a $1 million contribution to the 21st Century Conservation Service Corps. The 21 CSC, part of the national effort to reconnect young people and veterans to the outdoors through volunteer and work projects. Interior this week also welcomed a $25,000 donation from outdoor retailer Backwoods to further youth engagement outside. Secretary Jewell spending this Earth Day 2016 in Florida's Everglades. She's celebrating the ongoing Everglades Ecosystem Restoration Project by kicking off the next phase of construction of the Tamiami Trail Bridge. It's all part of federal and state efforts to conserve the Everglades and restore historic water flows and wildlife habitat. The newest class of the Fish and Wildlife Service's detector dogs will soon be on the job. The four canines will bring the number of specially trained canines to eight. The dogs will spread out around the country to the busiest ports of entry for the illegal trade in wildlife. That's where they'll get to work sniffing out live birds, elephant ivory, and more. 39th President of the United States, Nobel Peace Prize laureate, and now Park Ranger. Former President Jimmy Carter bestowed that honorary title this week by National Park Service Director Jonathan Jarvis at a ceremony in Plains, Georgia. During his time in the White House, President Carter created 39 National Park Service units and protected more than 56 million acres in Alaska, doubling the amount of land protected by the Park Service at that time. And as the summer vacation season approaches, this reminder from BLM, the BLM website features mobile-friendly interactive maps of 20 of the nation's most popular bike trails. One Way BLM is encouraging Americans to get outside and explore their public lands. Check them out at blm.gov mountainbike. That's this week at Interior.